Pentecost today. I am your co-host, Steve Mancini, and as always, I am joined by the Executive Director of Pentecost Today USA, Alicia Hardo. Alicia, welcome. Thank you. It is so good to be here with you all, and we are humbled to be joined by people from all across the nation, all around the world. And, you know, as you are listening, if there's a question that comes to your mind or heart, we want to welcome you to reach out to us. If you have comments, if you have suggestions, we would love to hear from you. So definitely visit our website, send us an email. We, we want to get to know you. Today, we are very, very humbled to have with us a special guest. He is a longtime friend and a fellow prayer group leader. And he actually works for Pentecost Today USA. He began as the director of operations, and he currently is serving in both resources and facilities. Has done a glorious, glorious work of some of some of the behind the scenes work of Pentecost Today USA, which which has been extraordinary. Pete also, in his many years as a lay member of the church. He has a background of working for PPG Industries as an HR director. He worked for Robert Morris University, which is where we are now in the recording studio. He worked in HR and campus security. And then his his most recent roles have been with Pentecost Today USA. So Pete, welcome. We are humbled to have you here with us. Oh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here and humbled as well. And Pete, you know what the good news is? That uh, you know your way around. Yes, I do. Now, when did you re- yeah. you retired? Not too many years ago, though. Not too many. Seven. Well, it was a little bit too many then. Yeah. yeah. I, think there's, I don't think there's any new buildings. That's the good news. Yeah, well, well the, actually, the UPMC Center. The event center, yeah. 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 Yep. So there you go. But Pete, again, welcome. One of the things we always like to do before we start the show is, again, we like to bless the Lord. Everything is in the name of God. If we're not doing this for Him, then we're not, we're not doing it for the right reasons. So... I think you've done this before, but we'd like to have you lead us off in a prayer today. Ah, absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we adore you, we bless you, and we glorify you. Mostly, we give you thanks. We thank you for sending your only Son, our Lord Jesus, down to this earth to become one of us, to teach us, to guide us, to take all of our sins upon his shoulders and die for us. And when he left... He and you so gratefully for us sent us the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us, to give us gifts, just to stir up things in us and to help us to find our way into heaven. We thank you for all that, Lord. We thank you for the opportunities to serve you. We ask you to bless us today, to help us to communicate what it is you want us to communicate and to help us to continue to serve you and we ask for the intercession of our most holy mother blessed virgin mary hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death amen in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. 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 All right. Well, again, before we start, we have another little tradition we like to do because we like to obviously solicit our guests and kind of dissect a different, the point, I don't want to call this the blueprint, but to me, it's kind of like the blueprint in the doctrinal commission. So Alicia, I know you know it a lot better than I do. You've been reading this thing for years. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a beautiful gift to the church. And so it's exciting for us to read quotes and to just to really kind of soak in the wisdom that has been gifted to us. So, so today's quote comes from part two, which really focuses on the biblical and patristic foundations. And it is on page 31. And that, that quote is, Although the noun phrase, baptism in the Holy Spirit, does not appear in Scripture, It is adapted from the verbal phrase, baptize in the Spirit, which occurs six times in Scripture. The promise that Jesus will baptize you in the Spirit is one of the most frequently repeated prophecies in the New Testament, announced by John the Baptist in all four Gospels, and by Jesus himself in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, and then recalled by Peter in Acts chapter 11, verse 16. And so we see this reflection on the contemporary experience of baptism in the Holy Spirit 
really being grounded in scripture. And, you know, at, at almost any prayer group in the nation, in the covenant communities, in the renewal centers, there's a beautiful fueling of sharing this gift of baptism in the Holy Spirit through Life in the Spirit series, through charismatic prayer meetings. And oftentimes we are hearing from individuals as well as different ministries. Our office serves a whole variety of people. Most recently, a a rector of one of the largest seminaries in the United States said, you know, I would like to start a charismatic prayer meeting. What resources can you share with me? Hmm. And so um, one of the great resources that we have here in our nation is that prayer group leaders have been leading prayer meetings and prayer groups for decades. And some of them are just so, so filled with the graces of the school of the Holy Spirit teaching, forming, pouring out graces. And so we're very humbled to have you here with us, Pete Fakes, and we are humbled to learn from you today. And as always, we want to begin by just just asking you a little bit about your background, and then we'll dive into exploring some of how your prayer group really shares the grace of baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, thank you, Alicia. Um, well, I was, I'm a cradle Catholic. I was, you know, born into a blue-collar Catholic family, and, you know, I attended Catholic elementary school. I was an altar boy, a lector. Um, I just pretty much accepted the religion that I was taught. I mean, my parents taught me that, and, you know, I attended Mass frequently. Well, not frequently, always on Sundays and Holy Days, and frequently went to uh, Holy Communion, and a couple times a year for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, you know, but looking back, it was more of a transactional type of a thing. Um, you know, it was, I, I needed to do these things so I wouldn't go to, to hell, you know, and not be punished, you know. So, you know, this is something that Michael Patrick Barber in his book Salvation refers to as purchasing fire insurance, right? Do these things and you won't go to hell. You know, and, you know, I went to college. I strayed a little bit, but not much. I missed Mass a few times, uh, um, but continued to do the things to avoid being punished and sent to that hot place. You know, after grad school, I did get a job with uh, PPG, a Fortune 500 company, and um, my first assignment was in Lake Charles, Louisiana, even though I'm born and raised in the Pittsburgh area. And, uh, you know, God has uh, an incredible way of doing things. I knew nothing about that area, but that's where I met my wife. Uh, in fact, 1983, I was still working there, and it was a very pivotal year. Uh, I met Teresa uh, in January, and we started dating. I was transferred to Houston, Texas in March. We got engaged in July. I was then transferred to Delaware, Ohio in October. I went back down, grabbed my Cajun queen, married her, and brought her back up <laughs> on New Year's <laughs> Eve. Uh, and uh, so that was uh, uh, something I thank God for. All three of our children were born in Ohio. Uh, around 2000, I was transferred to the corporate headquarters of PPG here in Pittsburgh. Had a very blessed corporate career as a uh, human resource executive, had global responsibilities. Um, now, the early 2000s was a very difficult time for me. I was under a lot of stress in the corporate world. I had some difficult issues within my extended family that uh, I was trying to help with, and there were other things that just led me into a depression. You know, the world really seemed to be broken. I was broken. Okay, I needed help. And I remembered that when I was in college, my father talked me in to going on a retreat at St. Paul the Cross Passionist Retreat Center. Okay? <laughs> and uh, it wasn't anything spectacular at the time. You know, it's up on top of the hill on the south side of Pittsburgh. You know, and but I did, I remembered that place, and I remembered how holy it was, and it was sacred grounds, and it was so peaceful. In fact, their tagline is, 
come to an out of the way place and rest a while. I said, yeah, that's what I need. Let me look, let me see what's coming up. So I looked and there was a retreat coming up in February, 2002. And guess what the title was? Walking with a Compassionate Jesus in a Broken World. Oh, another God incident in my life. And I was like, Phew. it had a huge impact upon me. It really drew me closer to the Lord. It uh, recharged my spiritual batteries. It really strengthened me to be able to go back out into the secular world and still practice my Catholic faith. Uh, I've gone every year since, except for one, when I was, when I was ill and became a promoter, and I promoted at uh, my parish, too. 2005 was a, another kind of uh, pivotal year for me. I was offered and accepted uh, Vice President of Human Resources and Public Safety here at Robert Morris University, and uh, that was an exciting new challenge. At the same time, I was really thirsting for more in my spiritual life. And this is where the Life in the Spirit seminars come in. Uh, Teresa attended a Life in the Spirit seminar. Either I couldn't or I didn't want to at the time because I was a busy person. I had all these responsibilities, blah, blah, blah. But uh, she went to it, and it was really impactful to her. You know? And then she started going to something called a prayer group meeting. I quizzed her about it. I said, isn't this run by charismatics? That term scared me, okay? And she says, yeah, it's run by charismatics. And I said, well, what goes on there? And he said, well, we pray, we sing some songs. There's normally a teaching, and, you know, we have intercessory prayer. And I said, okay, well, do they wave their hands in the air? You know, she says, well, some raise their hands, others don't. She says, I'm not real comfortable doing that, but it's, it's really you worship how you're most comfortable. I'm like, well, okay. Well, do they dance? She says, well, there hasn't, hasn't any, been any dancing so far, but there may be some, because sometimes they're full of joy. I'm like, okay. How about singing? Oh, yeah, the songs are really neat. I enjoy singing the songs. I said, well, do they wrestle snakes? Do they levitate? <laughs> she just looked at me, you know. Uh, but well, wait, know, wait, don't leave me in suspense, <laughs> do they? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> We're still waiting. But God could do anything. You know, I thought charismatics uh, were like that boastful Pharisee, you know, in Luke eighteen ten. You know, uh, boy, was I wrong. You know, I was wrong. And then the next pivotal moment came, you know, it, it, that was a seed. It was planted in me. And then in 2007, I went to pick up my youngest daughter at Faith Formation, and I was very early. So I was in the narthex of the church, and I... I went, there was a little library there, and I picked up a book, Hungry for God, by Ralph Martin. I start reading it. I read the first two chapters. I was like, wow, yes, oh, this is right on. Thank you, Lord. This is exactly what I needed, you know. Um, it really spoke to me, and, and, and where I wanted to go, it was giving me some directions. And then... A friend of mine, an acquaintance, wasn't a close friend as he is now, walked by, Bob Sowers. He ran the charismatic prayer group. He had a poster in his hand, and it was for the upcoming Life in the Spirit uh, seminar. And I said, hey, Bob, look at this. Look what I'm reading. I mean, this is an awesome book. You know, and he said, God wants you to come to this seminar. I looked at him. I'm like, whoa. You know, God speaks to this guy. Because uh, there was no doubt, you know. I said, well, I'm thinking about it. He says, you should come. Well, I did go. And uh, it was a, a beautiful experience. The, uh, the fifth week was the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, I went forward, and there were a group of three individuals that uh, prayed over me. And, uh, you know... I just shut my eyes and soaked it all in, and you know, um, when it was when they were they were done, they were like, "Well, anything happened?" I said, "Well, no, no, no." How do you feel? I feel wonderful, so peaceful, 
and calm and and and, and there's like a clarity uh, that was great and then Tom Fix, who was leading the prayer, said, well, do you want to pray in tongues? And I, how, how did he know? I'm like, well, yeah, I, I, I'd love to. And he said, well, come on. And he grabbed my hands and he did put them up in the air. And, uh, and then he started praying again. Well, I was waiting for the Holy Spirit to enter my vocal cords and start moving them for me, okay? And he goes to me, he said, well, you got to help them out. You know, yeah, I got to move your vocal cords yourself. And uh, so uh, I just started saying, Abba, Abba, Abba. And before you know it, I was praying in tongues. And, and what a beautiful gift that was. You know, there's different ways to pray. How many times can you say you're a wonderful God? Thank you, God. I love you. I praise you. I adore you. I worship you. You, you run out of words. And then you let the Holy Spirit take over, you know. And so it's a it's a beautiful thing. My spiritual journey was uh, uh, catapulted. It was like I was in the space shuttle taking off. The next year, I was a facilitator in one of the small groups for the seminar. The following year, I was one of the speakers. The following year, I was the MC. You know, now I run the prayer group, and I have for a few years. And let me say. I'm a co-leader, okay? Bob Sowers and I, true to our parish, uh, our new parish name, St. Martha's and Mary's, uh, I'm the Martha and he's the Mary, okay? I I'm worried about the details, starting on time, stopping on time. You know, is the priest going to show up? Is the speaker going to be there? All, all these things and, you know, is the Zoom working for tonight or whatever we're doing? And he's the one that just peacefully comes up with the most brilliant ideas and God speaks through him and you know uses his gifts of words of wisdom words of knowledge and uh, you know so between the two of us we we do okay you know I became going back to the baptism in the Holy Spirit though some of the immediate changes were scripture oh man it spoke right right to me you know to what was going on in my day at that time in in uh, mass it was beautiful. My kids would always tease me because I would close my eyes. They'd say, wake up, wake up. <laughs> I wasn't sleeping, honestly. <laughs> I might have been a little tired, but it was to focus on the prayers. And, you know, I used to be one of those distractions uh, that was around me then. And I remember looking around and seeing people like I would be, you know, thinking, oh, geez, I hope this hurts up and get over. I want to get mulching done today. It's nice outside, you know. Well, our plan. Here's what I'm going to make for lunch, and then maybe I'll barbecue. You know, and so I look around, I thought, oh, my. That was me for so many years, and I just felt sad because there was so much more. So mass came alive, and I went from trying to avoid going to hell to accepting God's love to get into heaven, you know, and, and just wanting to serve and do what I can so that I, I could be up there with a communion of saints, you know, with St. Peter, my namesake, with Jesus, Mary, with Joseph. Uh, so it really, you know, it had that, in, I became a Eucharistic minister of communion. And, I, you know, I remember the two greatest commandments, you know, love God and love thy neighbor. It was such a privilege to be able to pass out the real presence of our Lord to his people as they came up. And they were so beautiful, so different. Some of them, it would come up and you could see that they were troubled. Something was bothering them. And so I could say a quick prayer for them. You know, but it, it was just such, such a beautiful thing. And so little things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, uh, really found that, that serving others really was a cause for joy. You know, now, did that impact the way others saw you? Like, do you feel like, hey, you know what, somebody says there's something different about you, or was this so gradual that, you know, it was more of, like I said, like, like not, a, not a lightning bolt, it was just kind of a gradual piece? Yes, uh, Teresa noticed, uh, you know, was a, you know, she, she noticed where I was spending more of my time and, uh, and the things that uh, I was getting in, involved in. But one of the things that we always talk about in the Life and the Spirit seminar 
And one of the beautiful thing is God meets you where you are. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you believe in him a little or dedicated your life, he meets you there and helps move you forward. Mm-hmm. And there's always more, okay? You're all, it's, a, it's a constant growth, you know? So, I mean, I'm still working on myself, and I got a long way to go to get better, you know? There were some people at work that noticed it, you know? And I must say, you gotta be careful, because when it first hits you, you can overwhelm people, you know? And, and I did that to a few. I think I, I scared them a bit, you know? Uh, in fact, I, I won't name any names, but I remember being in the cafeteria right down the hall and, you know, ex- trying to explain uh, the reaction after being prayed over and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit to uh, one of the other um, executives here who was Catholic. And he, he was interested, but a little, right. whoa. Do you think I say? Do you think that turns people off? That they're almost almost like afraid. Mm-hmm. Hey, this might really radically change me. I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of comfortable where I'm at. I'm I'm like. Or the biggest thing is the spiritual lukewarmness, like you said before. And I, I'm guilty of it. You go to church, you're in your happy place, but but we see it as like a checkbox. Look, God, I'm here. Check. Look, God, I'm here. Check. Oh, I want the confession this year. Dear God, I want the check, and I'm and I'm, and I'm saved now. Yeah. You know that that's such a good question. I I met a woman from Italy. And we were both retreating at a Jesuit retreat center just outside of Dallas. And, and we're talking. She's like, oh, what do you do? And I share with her that I serve the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And I asked her if she knew of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And it was so interesting. She said those exact words. She said, oh, I have friends who are involved with that. And I can see their lives are lives filled with adventure, filled with, you know, just extraordinary closeness with the Lord, but she said, I'm afraid that the Lord will ask me to change, and I, I don't want that. Well, <laughs> was it St. Augustine that said, you know, give, what was it, was, give, me, give me something, but not yet. Give me chastity. Give me but chastity, not but not yet. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear your thoughts, Pete. I think that's, you see so many people coming through the parish who come through life in the Spirit and maybe have different reactions than yours when they receive an invitation to attend a life in the Spirit, or maybe even as they go through the yeah, life so in the Spirit. That's been one of the, one of the beautiful things is, you know, I've been at it for a while now, seeing somebody that I've, I've prayed with for the baptism of the Holy Spirit 10 years later and, and what they've become. Um, but back to your question, uh, there's someone in my own family that... Is that, and I won't say any names. Could be anybody, <laughs> but uh, is is just that is afraid of like you, you really need to go to this life of the spirit. You're ready, and it's like oh, I'm kind of afraid of what the Lord may ask me to do. You know, now he or she won't say that directly, but that's what it is. And I had that. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh my gosh. I'm going to have to, like, sell everything I have, shave my head, and go be a monk, <laughs> leave my family, you know. I, 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 you know, it was part, a part of that. I, but, you know, that's not But that what, just proves that we have not surrendered. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I think that's part of the grace of falling in love. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is so like falling in the love. Like, Lord, wherever you send me. Whatever you ask of me, here I am, Lord. Yeah. And, and it's so, it's such an experience of falling in love with the Lord and receiving his love and knowing that he has given everything for us. <laughs> and the Lord gives yeah. and the Lord yeah. can take away. It's very clear in the Bible, some of these rules. And again, to, to sit there and say, ah, not yet because I'm in a good place. Okay, let's do it my way, says the Lord. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think even living life in the Spirit, having gone through countless Life in the Spirit series, there's always more, and the mm-hmm. Lord's always calling us out of our comfort zone, and the Lord's always calling us to deeper surrender. So that that battle, or maybe that obstacle that people face or see, it continues. It's you know part of the ongoing conversion that the Lord, the love story and relationship that the Lord invites us into. Yeah, but when you trust more and when you mm-hmm. surrender deeper, you know now I understand. I, I, I was in a sacred marriage. You know, uh, and he's not going to take me away from that and my responsibilities. That's what he put me on the earth for. Now, he could have, and that would have been okay. You know, back then I wouldn't have thought of it, you know. But uh, you know, he could do radical things, like Mother Teresa says, you know, do ordinary things 
with extraordinary love, right? He, he, he gives ordinary people gifts so that they can do things with extraordinary love you know, and, and to serve them. Well, ironically enough, I heard, uh, I think it was my daughter that told me, she says, you know, God doesn't call the trained, he trains the called. Yeah. And, and it's exactly right. It's you, you, you kind of said to, before, he'll meet you where you're at. And if you, and there's the fundamental question. If you really believe in God and the way that we understand it, this all-powerful, all, you know, omnipotent, omniscient being that's beyond time and space, beyond our comprehension, that comes down, though, at some point in history and says, okay, I need to show you how to do this. I'm going to send my begotten son. He's going to come down here as a human now. Walk the same path you're walking. And then just like a human, he's going to leave at some point. He leaves. But he says, but don't worry. I'm going to send something to help you stay on the path. That's been my theme. I think I finally found my theme. It's the path. It's a path. It's a journey. And so if you believe that, then you have to know two things. One, that your time here is finite. Okay, period. This is all, this is all just a blink. The, the time that we spend on is a blink. If you think back 2,000 years ago, a guy named Peter walked this earth. It's the same Peter that if we believe the Bible said, I don't know this guy, three times. I don't know this guy. I don't know mm-hmm. this guy. But yet he ends up being the rock on which you know, Jesus builds this new church. But if you believe all of these things, and you, understand, and you don't even have to actually understand it because God knows you don't understand. We, don't, we can't grasp this. But if you believe these things, then you have to see beyond the 60, 70, 80, or God willing, 90 years, you're going to walk on this earth. And you also have to see beyond the stuff. And I think that's where we get clouded and we don't want to change. We go home to our warm bed for the most part. You know, I understand not everybody is. It's a simple blessing a lot of people don't appreciate. You know, another friend said to me, you know what, we're, we're in a country where we can choose what we want to eat tonight. People talk about their diets. It's something as simple and bland, but benign as, well, you know what, I think I'm going to be vegetarian. I'm going to be a carnivore. I'm going to be a meditarian. We get to choose what we're going to eat. We get to, we're going to go home. We're going to choose what we're going to put on tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We get so comfortable and wrapped up in that that we think that's all. We, we start to lose and we think that's all there is, and we don't see beyond the material world. But the folks, if you're listening, you say, no, I believe in God, then what do you believe? Because if you don't believe it, then you can't proclaim Jesus as Lord unless the Spirit is within you. So I, I think fundamentally it comes down to if people are going to get to that stage in their life, they have to say, you know what? This 60, 70, 80, God willing, 90 years is exactly that. But eternity is a lot longer than 60, 70, 80. So, all right, God, yeah. what do you want? Mm-hmm. And people mm-hmm. aren't ready to do that. That's just a hard thing to break from. Yeah, you know, Steve, I think there's something there that's critical for all of us to kind of remember that there's a, a difference between knowing about God right and maybe Pete I think your testimony is just a beautiful witness to I was I was doing all the right things but I wasn't yet in relationship with the Lord amen and so it just accentuates the grace that the spirit pours out onto us bringing us into relationship with Jesus bringing us into relationship with the Father and not only into relationship, but receiving the love, the power, the mercy, the grace, and walking in it. You know, I think sometimes we have this, like, I will begin to experience the kingdom of heaven when I get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm on this path that will lead me to, to this place that's far off. But I think really the grace of baptism in the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it is within us, and the Lord is inviting us in every moment to enter into relationship, to be moved by that relationship. And Pete, you know, I think that's something that I see just just knowing you and seeing your love for for Teresa, your love for your children, your love for your grandchildren. It is the Father's love made manifest here on earth, and it it pours out into the prayer group. It pours out into the parish, and it is so holy so holy that people it's it's breathtakingly beautiful and and people can't help but say ah this is the love of our heavenly father this is perfect love this is infinite love and it and it's poured out through you and through how you love and care for those the lord places in your path and it's 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 a, just a beautiful witness of the kingdom of heaven here on earth so people well, thank you so much we, and, uh, Oh my. All glory to God. 
Well, glory to God. By the way, the irony is you said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And where, where is that written at? I, I know the answer, but I mean, I want people to think about this. This is why I have this discussion with a lot of Catholics that still don't believe they're supposed to read the Bible. Mm-hmm. It's an old mindset that people think, I'm not supposed to read it because I don't want to misinterpret it. I don't want to misunderstand it. Look, some of it I can understand that there are things that could confuse you. You know, I get it. You know, and I can even, you know, you can pull some stories and say, well, that does, I don't know, why would God do that? It doesn't make sense. But then you have to step back and, and see the totality of what's going on here, especially the different ages of God. You know, I, I almost, I personally equate it to like how you would raise a child. You treat a baby different than you treat a toddler, different than you teach a teenager, different than you treat your children when they're adults. So it's, it's almost like the growth of humanity's spiritual life. Well, he seemed like he was really mean in the Old Testament. It was the same loving God because he would forgive them and he would always kept telling them, listen, just do this, just, just listen. I mean, they wouldn't do it and he had to you know, kind of smack them down a little bit. But then later on, you know, it sort of changes the relationship. I think that people that don't read the Bible, you know, here, here's wisdom, right? You got to read it. You got to understand this stuff or you can't understand that everything we're talking about it's all biblically grounded. It's in there. You know, this, this notion, it took me a long time to really start appreciating. He said it starts with John the Baptist, and it keeps going. And, and the other thing was a lot of people said, well, where does it talk about the Holy Spirit? In the Old Testament, well, in multiple places it talks about that. These, these aren't new concepts. In fact, they, right. you know, this was, you know, the Spirit walked among them. The Spirit was in the garden, you know. So these are all biblically grounded. And the idea is you have to, to it's within you. You just have to open up, surrender, and let it out. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, it's in there. Temples of the Lord were hosted. It's why, you know, the whole Eucharist, it's all built around this. And I, I just, to your point, Alicia, knowing God is very different than really knowing God. And I think a lot of people do the, yeah, I believe in God. I go to church. I'm a good person. It's, you know, I'm good. Don't want to, but I don't want to turn it over yet. So. One, of the, one of the things, uh, the reactions that I had when I went through the Life in the Spirit seminar was, why didn't anybody tell me this before? Right. <laughs> I, I didn't know these gifts were for me. Mm-hmm. I thought it was for, you know, the, uh, the apostles back at Pentecost. You mean I got these? What? What are mine? You know? And oh, everybody needs to know this. And that's when I was cautioned. Take it easy. <laughs> bring it down. You're going to scare people away, you know? And, uh, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm involved in the prayer group. You know, I want people to know. I want them to experience that. I want them to experience joy, even when their life's upside down or there's bad things happening, to have that relationship that they could still be joyful in the Lord. I think that's inspiring for everyone who has received the grace of baptism in the Holy Spirit to share it, just seeing seeing the, the beautiful receptivity and just that moment of, why haven't I heard about this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of the moment of discovery and and the joy and the beauty of it. I'll never forget a man in a small group at a life in the spirit at a parish here in Pittsburgh. He was probably in his 60s and he said, you know, I come from a devout Catholic family. I've lived what I believe is a devout Catholic life. But he said, "I, I never knew I could be in relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I never knew about the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit why did no one ever tell me? You know, mm-hmm. and I, my heart just broke. Oh, Lord, you know, send us, send me, send us to share this beautiful grace of the fullness of life in the Spirit that every single baptized believer has been called into and, and has as a gift. Help us to unwrap the gift. So, so yeah, Pete, we would love to invite you to pray for all who are listening. If they're is someone out there who's listening and saying, you know, there's someone in my life who I've been praying for, maybe a son or daughter, maybe um, maybe a, a fellow parishioner, and they're having that moment, like what you described, just saying, oh, you know, I really think that they would, they would receive so much if they said yes to this invitation to a life in the Spirit, or, or if they maybe read this book or said yes in some way to an invitation to receiving the Holy Spirit. If you would lead us in praying for those people in our lives who we can see are hungering and thirsting for life in the Spirit, but maybe don't know it yet. Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for stirring up the Holy Spirit gifts within us. Come, Holy Spirit, come.
come Holy Spirit, come. We ask you to, to bless all of those listening here today, to stir up the gifts within them. We ask you to make the message of what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit available to those that need to hear it and to understand it and to not be afraid to, to move forward and attend a Life in the Spirit seminar or attend a prayer group meeting. Uh, Lord, we lift them up to you. We lift them up to you because you are love. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you. And we thank you for Pope Francis taking us from a renegade outpost that was accepted uh, all the way into a grace that runs through the church. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we ask you to use us to continue to serve you, to do your will, to bring your love to your people. And we say this, giving all glory to you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, folks, I want to thank you again for tuning in. But before we go, Alicia and I want to just remind you that the nine-year novena will be kicking off in May, and preparations are already underway. But if you want to learn more about it, go out to our website at pentecosttodayusa.org. And as always, one of the purposes for this organization is to do exactly what we're doing, to help kind of organize, coordinate, and get the word out about the whole charismatic movement. I know personally it was through Pentecost today that I was introduced through this. So I encourage you to please go out to the website, PentecostTodayUSA.org. And to be very blunt, we would appreciate your support. We're mostly driven by volunteers, and you know we're trying to go around. You know, Alicia, you talked about trying to spread the word. Well, Poor Alicia's on the road all of the time. That's why, you know, dragging her in the studio is, there's my miracle for the day. I actually get to see Alicia. It's been a while. And we're able to do these things because of your support. So I do want to thank the folks that are supporting and any kind of support, whether it's your prayers, whether you want to donate, just come on out to the website, PentecostTodayUSA.org. Consider supporting us. If nothing else, there are a bunch of resources out there that you can learn about more efforts that are going on, upcoming events that are going on, especially, like I said, the nine-year novena. If you are looking for a reason to really start focusing your prayer life, we're giving you one. We're giving you the opportunity that every day in communion with a bunch of other folks that are going to be out there, hopefully all over the world, ideally at the same time. It is okay if you cannot do it at the same time, but the most important thing is that you will pray every day for nine years. And I will promise you as somebody who's not for nine years, but I would say a while now has been trying to make the effort to, to sincerely block time off every day to, you know, just to spend it in quiet solitude with the Lord. I can tell you that the peace it brings you and the way it strengthens your, or your faith, you, you cannot believe the change that you will undergo. So I'm actually looking forward to trying this nine-year novena and every day just spending a little bit of time and saying, you know, knowing that I, my prayers are being heard with multitudes, again, hopefully all over the world. And again, we're going to encourage you to do that and join us as well. And again, please, PentecostTodayUSA.org. Alicia, anything you want to add? We just want to say thank you. Many of you who are listening are faithful supporters. We, we have an army of holy, humble, on-fire renewal leaders, those who have been involved in the charismatic renewal, some for decades. And so we just, we want to thank you. We are so humbled, so humbled to have you as partners in bringing the grace of baptism and the Holy Spirit to the whole church and building unity in the body of Christ and in serving the poor, especially the spiritually poor here in our nation. So we just, we just share a, a huge, huge thank you to all of you. And we pray that the Lord returns the, the blessing of your partnership and your service to you a thousandfold, that you would see the blessing of the Lord on your family, on your children, on your children's children, on your neighborhood, on your parish, on your every territory that the Lord has given to you. We just pray that there is a mighty and mighty blessing that falls upon you. So thank you. And we are, we're very excited for all the precious guests the Lord has brought to us. They are from coming to us from all across the nation, 
all around the world. And it's just exciting to hear the work of the Holy Spirit in so many mighty men and women of God. So we thank you. All right, folks. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you next week. And have a wonderful and blessed day.